I'm going to make a drawing of a cat, starting with the eye. I trace the outlines of the eye and the nose and the mouth beforehand, because I'm a bit lazy, I think. <laughs> but sometimes I do that to, to get the placement right or whatever. In this case, I just did it to save time and effort and to concentrate on uh, the hatchings. And uh, I actually don't use lines in my hatchings. I just hatch and when there is supposed to be a line uh, uh, suggested, I use a sequence of dots as you saw there. And on the other side of the eye and now that one eye is clearly defined I go to the other one start with the pupil there and what's around the eye in fact I'm the in a sense I'm de delineating the eye with hatchings in this way with subtle hatchings and also now a little bit of the iris or I, I don't know how you call that with the cat's eye is that an, a very big iris anyway um, starting a bit with tonal values in that And I'm just adding accentuations here and there to get the definition of the eye more complete. And as you can see, I also start within the eye, adding tonal values. And now the nose. So the eyes are, let's say, minimally um, defined. And then I go to the nose of the cat and in the same way I will uh, execute that nose with tonal values and sort of subtle hatchings to delineate more or less in hatchings that part of, of, of its face snout <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to suggest the outline with, with accentuations not with lines now to the mouth and now that I've I have the mouth and the nose and the eyes I can work on more details Also, I start with the area be between those uh, parts, connecting the nose with the eye there, with a subtle la a sequence of dots. There I use a piece of paper so my wrist does not touch the paper all the time because otherwise my wrist would get some of the graphite on it and I would get uh, you know uh, markings of that wrist on the paper. There you see me adding a subtle tonal value to the eye. I mean there, there is there are some highlights in the eye but I'm working on white paper so I have to leave the lighting I have to leave the highlights white while I make the rest a little bit darker so if you use darker paper you can get a more painterly approach by adding highlights using white paint or something but I don't do that I just use a white paper now with uh, graphite I personally like the simplicity of this graphite approach very much. Uh, 
just white paper, one pencil, or one type of pencil, because I actually use two pencils. Uh, when this one gets a bit blunt, I use another sharp one, but that's the only thing I do <laughs> in that respect. Um, I'm carefully de uh, defining the eye a little better, uh, a little bit above the eye even, tonal value. I'm going off to the other eye. There's a sort of symmetry when you um, go further on one detail. You want the other eye to be just as far in, in, in the execution. So you don't want one eye that is almost finished and the other eye that is uh, just begun or something. You want to work that up uh, simultaneously. And I freely go from delineating the eye to adding tonal values in the eye. Um, sometimes a tonal, I mean, sometimes a, a hatching can function as different uh, type of approaches at once. So can darken the nose a bit but maybe it extends to a part of the face as well not in this case but it can happen that uh, you you add one hatching and it has multiple effects delineating it better or making the things darker but it has to go fluently one has to get into a certain rhythm going from one area to the other uh, seeing this or that and as you develop your skills uh, that sort of fluency has to become easier I'm adding those dark spots where the nose hairs come from a certain rhythm in that I, I actually got this photograph from Pixab Bay, which is a free service with uh, photographs that you can use for this. Uh, they have C00 uh, Creative Commons code, or how do you call it? And then you can freely use those. They are they, they have no copyright, but it's always important to look at the kind of rights that you have for using a photograph that you get online so pexels.com or pixabay.com are very convenient for getting nice photographs to work from here I'm adding some detail to the face some tonal value and it's a question uh, how minimalistic you want to work um, there are several stages in this drawing, as you can see when you see this video, that you, that you could say you can stop here and that's it. And, but I, I um, the end result is quite um, elaborate, I think. So I could have stopped here more or less with, with a little more work, but I decided to, to, to get you know, to get quite a lot of tonal values in it. accentuation and hatchings and with these short uh, lines I try to um, suggest something of the fur of the cat so hatchings like this that I'm applying now those are just to make it darker but sometimes I want the uh, the lines to be visible 
even if the hatching is, is you know, it's, it's a small rhythm of, of, of accentuation, it's more the real hatching, but it suggests the, you know, the structure of the fur more. So some hatchings are really to make it of a darker tonal value, some are to suggest the kind of fur that the cat has. Now you see that it's face or snout is more defined on the left with this little uh, sequence of hatchings on, on the left just below my thumb now working on the detail of the nose a bit more Drawn like this, the expression of the eyes are very important. You want to get that right. If the eyes aren't convincing, um, uh, it discourages one to to actually uh, go finish such a drawing. Uh, I, I, from an, quite an early stage, I want the eyes to be very expressive. Adding some definition to the f to the face or, or the snout of that cat, the head. And I also have to look at the structure of the the lights and darks of the fur. So now I'm working on the I just worked on the darker area of the fur. So below the eye there's a lighter area and below that for humans you could say cheek but in that area the fur is darker so I worked on that a bit as well. And now I'm adding accentuations in the mouth. I think that that area was a bit too smooth before those accentuations. Sometimes you have to watch out when you add hatchings of a certain tonal value that it doesn't become too much of a smooth equal block of hatchings. That it's too tight or something. Um, when you make a drawing, you want to be true to the structure of the drawing, all through the drawing. So when you have a certain um, structure in, in, in the upper part of the, of the drawing, you don't want a very rectangular, smooth area below. Sometimes you add just hatchings to, to get the structure right. I don't think I did that consciously, I think I did it just to to define it better according to the photograph I used. I just added some of the hairs of the moustache. I don't know how you call it with cats, but those hairs, they take some careful planning actually when you hold your hand. You have to take into account how the hand will move to get such a line on the paper. So I made several of those lines now and they're part of what a cat looks like of course. And now I'm adding hatchings to get that area darker, there's darker fur. And below the eye there's this, on, also on the right, this lighter area in the fur. So you want to define that as well. And now I'm adding those lines to suggest the fur 
the structure of the fur so um, those have a different direction those short lines than the hatchings below that as you can see so you do not actually literally copy everything about the fur as it is on the picture but you are uh, trying to replicate a bit of the structure of the fur in that in that respect so that someone looking at this drawing gets a feel of how the fur is as a structure and it's not really a literal copy of everything in every aspect uh, so it, it, that's the power of suggestion adding certain accentuations which gives you the sense of structure in in a certain material and it applies to all kinds of materials not only fur now i'm working to get the tonal values darker i'm actually with a broad <laughs> i would almost say with a broad brush uh, adding uh, those head shanks to get it darkened In this case I, I actually like the broad composition of this because it goes well with the, the, the dimensions of the screen of YouTube. So now I'm adding those um, furry suggestive lines again. But I like this broad, um, these broad dimensions. So. Because I make these drawings for YouTube, I might make them more often this way because it fills nicely the, the screen. <laughs> when you make a rectangular uh, portrait shaped uh, drawing uh, in a vertical manner, you only use part of the screen or you have to uh, get close ups or, or something. But I, I like this setup actually <coughs> adding more definitions in that area with those dark spots for the hairs where, where the hairs come from i think that's that yeah adding some accentuations there some suggestive accentuations to get a structure of the fur again there And when you make a drawing like this, it's good to think beforehand what kind of crop you want, what kind of area of the photo you want to use. So this was a photograph which showed a complete cat, not just this detail, but I used only a, a, a part of that photograph to make this uh, drawing. <coughs> I'm going from here to there. On the left I added uh, some background, some some dark uh, hatchings to give it more atmosphere. Some things you can think of beforehand and some things you can think of while you are making the drawing. Uh, like the kind of crop that you use it's convenient to think of that beforehand but what kind of suggestion of a background you use that's something which you often do while you are making the drawing unless you really want to make a minimalistic drawing and you uh, only draw for example the eyes and the nose or the mouth but that's not the case here and I'm going from one area to the other and uh, in a certain rhythm you go from one detail to the other um, then you see something here then you see something there also these suggestive furry 
lines. I can call them like that. And here there's, um, I'm adding those dark lines that cats have in their fur sometimes, this cat has. And it's a question of uh, how far do you go in completing such a drawing. Um, as I said, at, at different stages I could have stopped and said, well this is it. And when you see the, the finished drawing you, you could say, well, you, you could have gone on for five minutes as well. But at a certain moment you choose when a drawing like this is finished enough. Um, and usually one feels that at a certain stage. Um, now I'm quite crudely adding tonal values. I think I had a sense of, ooh, this is going, this is not going right when I did this. I am adding this, these comments later on, but when I did this, I had to work more on this drawing to get it more hum harmonious from now on. But sometimes you, you, you need a certain crude approach in the middle of a drawing to get it to a certain stage where the tonal values are much darker in certain areas, for example. Sometimes one can be too too careful. Sometimes you just need to to have a certain mindset of well I'm, I'm, I'm just making it darker with crude with, with a broad brush so to speak. You think of pencil. <laughs> So now I'm adding tonal values to other areas to get it more in line, to get it more harmonious with the parts that I just made dark in quite a crude way. But now these lighter areas below the eyes are more accentuated by making other parts darker. So I think that's what you get when you develop a drawing you sense that to get something more defined you have to get something darker at another place <clears throat> sometimes it's need it, it needs something quite forceful to get to that next step in the drawing approaching completion at a certain moment one feels that what you are adding doesn't add much anymore so I think I'm slowly getting to that point here <laughs> that one starts to think what next uh, this drawing some furry accentuations well this is more for the definition of the cat's face detail here and there the eyes a bit more yeah. when you draw cat's eyes you want to get them moist and shiny
and I'm slowly wondering what to do next. But I'm adding detail to the nose and here and there. And now it gets more three-dimensional by getting the tonal values uh, better. I think it was good to have that crude face in the drawing on the right, on the right side of the drawing. Um, to, to just get it darker there, to, to, to get it to that next step. Looking at the tonal values of the mouth or the what's below the nose. And that's it. Thank you for watching and if you like these kind of videos please subscribe or like or comment whatever you'd like to do. Thank you.